Right, good morning everyone. Um, another review of uh, a board game and the components, not big, not gameplay or anything, just going through the components uh, just to show you what's, what's available. And as you can see, it, I'm doing this a bit different. Normally I would start with the board, we'd go through the board etc. But you lot are only here to see the bloody toys, aren't you? So, just as a sneak preview, oh, 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 there's some toys, oh, right. So I'm going to start with the toys to save you bloody fast forward because that's what you really want to see. You'd come back and watch the nitty gritty later. So we're talking Red Alert, Space Warfare, the latest iteration from Richard Borg's Commands and Colours system. Now, without further ado, and I'm what I'll do is I'm going to try and set the inside of this box up something to show the models with a white background I think and we'll, we'll look at the models first so and what I'll do is a, as a bonus while I'm looking at the models we'll also go through the expansion pack models so you've seen all the toys in one go although obviously I won't be playing with these yet but you'll get to see them so I'll just stop the camera a sec while I set up and we'll, we'll, we'll crack on Right, we'll start off with the Admiral's flagships. These are classed as capital ships. Um, where's my ruler? I should probably put my ruler. Give me a second. Uh, oh, uh, these are classed as Admiral's flagships, so kind of battleships. And this one's what, three, three and a half inches, eight, eight and a half centimeters, and that'll be somewhat similar. Maybe a little bit, yeah, about the same. So that's just, that's them. Okay. What can I get in a bit closer? Because I know what this camera's like. Let's look up one at a time. I'll move that red one out of the way. And we'll it. Now the green ones are the the Confederation. According to the rules, you can see there's a lot of detail there. And um, they come on these stands. You have to fit these little plastic poles into the base and uh, also into the base of the model um, to do he says knowingly no they do you know hold up well they're not glued or anything they do fit pretty snug but in some cases a bit too bloody snug as, 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 I'll, as I'll demonstrate in a moment um, so that's so let's, let's do a turn for it there's the back, so plenty of scope there for uh, engines, etc. We've got turrets and things on there. Turn it around the other way. Bring it back into the shot. Right. A lot of detail. They're crying out for paint, aren't they? I mean, a lot of people won't bother. And then, I don't know, if you paint them, you, you, you're going to really have to leave them assembled. Because you don't want to be constantly taking them apart. Not only that. The holes in the holes and the these little spindle things, they're just going to wear away out there if you keep constantly putting them together and taking them apart. And we paint it, if you paint them, you don't want to be constantly handling the things, you want to be handling them by the base. So if I painted them, which I, to be honest, I, I really want to, I think I would have to glue them on the bases. Right, that's so that was a Confederation. Um, Commander in Chief's flagship. Now, it, this is the Commonwealth. Let's put it into the white area. Similar sort of thing. It's the uh, it's it's the flagship for the Commonwealth. Now, you'll see this is just stood on one sprue, uh, one pole, and the reason for that is inside. I don't know if you're able to see just there. The other top of the other pole is snapped inside there, and I did that. With my big ham fist, ham fisted fingers. Now you can see that even though it's quite a big ship, that one pole, it's not glued, it is supporting it. Which begs me to wonder why they didn't just put a hole in the centre and have a single pole, maybe something a little bit more steady than this, and maybe a slightly smaller base. I don't know. Mm -hmm. They have the obviously plastic soldier companies and also damn sight more about these things than I do, but you know it's working with just that one. 
I mean, if the worst comes to the worst, I can glue, I've kept the damaged stick, I can glue it in there and I can glue it to the bottom of there. But again, crying out for painting, let's turn it around again and show you the rear. And show it going the other way. Lovely sculpts, and, and th these things are solid, heavy resin. There, there's no bendy plastic with this, there's no lightweight stuff. It's, this is good quality stuff. Well, well, let, let me put, oh, and you get one of these each, one each of these, one in red, one in green. Admiral's uh, flagship. Now, you get next up, let's still cut the red flag. This is a battleship, your standard battleship. Um, let me just double check how many of them you get. I've got it in the robot. But again, a lovely model. Um, you get six, six each, six green and six red. You get uh, 12 cruisers, 12 destroyers and 15 fighters, just so you know. Each side gets that. So, that's that. So, We've got these, let's turn her around. Again, lovely sculpt. Come back a bit. Get it in. Turn around again. Loads and loads of detail. And this, what did I say? You get six of them. Because it's like the typical commands and colours, like you have with blocks. Three of them would form a squadron. Or maybe four if it's a heavy squadron. Um, and basically you would remove one ship once once the damage, you know, so eventually when the last ship disappears That's when the unit would be destroyed Just much like commands and colors, but unlike commands and colors you don't get flags This game's all about points. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Now here's a battleship for the Confederation Again lovely detail You could do so much with the Dry brushing, washing, highlighting with these things. I mean, they they are quite impressive. And then you get six, six for each side, six green ones and six red ones. Oh, what's the measurements? I didn't measure them today. That's about three and a bit inches. Bring the other boy back. Oh. He's get on there. He's four inches, ten centimetres. So he's a little bit longer, but he's a bit, bit, a bit more slender as well. So he's a little bit longer. But them's your two battleships. Right, move them out the way. Next thing we'll bring in the cruisers. Get the red cruiser on this now. I'll do a measurement then while I'm here. That measures seven inches, just under seven, six and a half inches. No, what am I talking about? Six and a half centimetres and about two and a half inches. Again, and that's what as I say, you get 12 of these. So there would be enough for three squadrons of three or four squadrons of, of uh, three squadrons. Yeah, four squadrons of three or three squadrons of four. Again, I'm saying it wrong. These, you'll notice the sticks on these. Well, you don't because I've got it like that. But these are taller. Let's get one of them others back here. Capital ships go on the shorter stalks. Pumps out that side. The shorter sticks. Everything else goes on the taller sticks. So battleships, capital ships, big sticks, and the, uh, sorry, little, the shorter sticks, and such as these, go on the taller sprues. Again, the, the pen, it's the same place. They're not glued or anything. Let's turn him around. This is the cruiser for the uh, Commonwealth. And going the other way. 
Again, lots of detail. Let's bring in the cruiser for the Confederation. Again, smashing look at thing. It's got like engine pod, pods on this one. Uh, the, to me, the green ships are the better ones. Uh, just my personal, just looking at them, to me the greens just look, just look mean and green and business-like. Um, I do like the green. There's nothing wrong with the red ones, but these just, I don't know, just seem to have more appeal, I don't know why. So that's the cruisers, and we did I say you get 12 of them. Last night, well no, not last night, but ships of any significant size, we have destroyers. Four and a bit centimetres and just under two inches. Uh, the destroyer. Let's turn around. And finally going the other way. So that's the common one. And now the destroyer for Confederation. Lovely, lovely scores. And uh, 12 of them, I think I said yes. And finally, let's get some of these fighters in. These are the, they normally will operate in threes or sixes, uh, so, sorry, threes or fours. Threes would be a, a standard fighter squadron. Four would be a heavy fighter squadron. Um, so you'd have that number of models in per hex. Also, the capital ships, such as the battleships, always are accompanied by three fighters. It's part of their defence. You've got to destroy the defence. You've got to destroy the cap aircraft before you can start shooting at the uh, capital ship, which has got super super heavy armour anyway. Uh, these, although small, again, not bad scores, pretty nice. Can I get in a bit more? Nah, nah, this can more let me. So that's as close as I can get. Uh, turn it around that way. You get 15 of these, so let's, let's move them out of the way and we'll bring the reds in. Uh, get me in shot. Look at these so close like this, it's difficult. Getting further across. Right, there's the reds. And I've turned these round so you can see them. Well, these are tiny out there, they're under an inch. No need to measure these. And so there's the uh, the Commonwealth fighters. So that's the toys you get in the base set. Okay, so I'll move now. Right, now, of course, it's the far end of the picking table. Right, let's get the Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Escalation pack. Now, in here, you just get one dreadnought for each side. Now, obviously, I've not, this is how they come. You get the cards from, I'll, I'll quickly show you the, no, I won't, because you don't want to see that. You want to see the toys. We'll talk about that later. I know what you're like, you're just bloody fast forward, you can down. Well, I am, but I'm not going to admit it to you. Right, now, Look at these monsters where you would have put in this view. I am put it on its obvious, it's not on its stand, but the stands do come with it. Now, there's the original battleship. Pretty much of a muchness lengthwise and that. Does look a bit different. Um, and believe me, this is heavy. It's solid. Beautiful thing, let's, let's, get the, let's get the measurements on it, let's get that one out for you. Get the ruler on it. It is. Oh, 
well, 11 centimetres, four and a half inches. That's that one. So that's a dreadnought. So that's a super heavy battleship. The green one, again, I think it looks better, but that's just my opinion. Um, again, what? Yeah, about the same, four and a quarter inches, 11 centimetres. Again, very heavy. Beautiful detail. Stand with the engines and the starboard side. So that's a dreadnought pack, and it does come with each battleship does come with its requisite uh, cat fighters, three fighters for each. So put that out there to one side. Next, we get the carrier. Escalation pack. Again, you get one of each in with its cat fighters, and this can use its. I won't go into those too much, but the carrier fighter, the carrier can use the carrier. Get right in it. The carrier can use its fighters in a slightly different way. Where normally the fighters have to stay together, this the carriers can make them do go off on their own individually. So that's not good. I'm going to get in this back in the bag. Right. So there's a carrier for the reds. Measurement. Four inches, ten centimetres, much of a muchness really. Which oh, because it's got all sorts of lumps and bumps and turrets and things underneath. Let's hold it like this. So you can see it. That's all this turret down there in the middle. Yeah, let's turn it this way. Let's turn. And the stab at the side. I guess you can't in position your bridge right up forward, so I suppose all this is technically the uh, the hangers for your fighters. So that's for the red. That's the red carrier. The green carrier. Measurements. Yeah, four inches again, about the same. Let's pick her up so you can see a bit in the lovely detail. Look at that stain. Again, my preference, I love these green ones, I think. I don't know why, they just, just look the mean, the business to me. Right. So that's the carriers. Um, the Vice Admiral's flagship, I won't show you that because it's the same, it's the exact same sculpt, sculpt as, as the, the Admiral's flagship I've already shown you, so I don't need to take that out of the box, it's just the same thing with its cap. And finally, logistics and space platform. You, know, this, you get more models in this one. Baggy full model here. These are grey because they're neutral because either side can use these depending on the scenario. So get that with the stands and everything. There is a space station. Um, there's only one. Let me put the parts in there so you can see them. It's got its own big thick base what goes into a it's standy that goes into a base. So and these two parts go together. I assume 
Well, I don't know because I haven't checked. But it'll go somewhere together, somewhere like something like this. Can you see? Something like this, and then it'll be on its stand. But I've not built it yet. But it should be interesting. It should look good, and it's it's a very it's a very powerful unit. We're going to get one of them. So I'll put that back in its back so I don't lose that sprue thing because that's an integral part of the, the space station. Now the rest of what you get are these transports. And I think, let me do this, I think there's eight. One, two, three, four. Eight transport ships, yes. Uh, they're all the same and they're in this grey colour. Um, measurements. Eight centimetres, three and a half inches, three and a quarter inches, something like that, but they're very fat. Um, let's pick one up, bring it in a bit closer. These can be used on certain terrain tiles to uh, gain you victory points for um, basically being on planets. I'm assuming that it's transport, so they're probably taking troops and equipment and things, and all the time, every turn that they're on one of these planet constellations or star constellations, they're delivering goods or troops and things, and you get a, a, a victory point for it. So you get eight of them, and they'll come into various things, but they, they are great because uh, either side can use them. And that, that gentleman, is pretty much the toys. So I'll put all the toys away now, and then I'll go back and start again, and uh, we'll have a, a proper look at the rest of the components in... Uh, Regulate space we offer, so I'll be back shortly. Alright, we're back again. I'm just going to show you this huge board, or to put it correctly, mat. Um, first time I've known him to dispense with the, uh, you know, the mounted boards, but. I'll try and give you some measurements, it's difficult to fit it all in, but I'll measure it. The mass is 53 inches in length, which is 135 centimetres. Now in weight, you can see I've got a bit hanging over each side, just a little bit of the, little bit of the um, hex. So there's about what? Hanging over, there's about three inches hanging over at each side. Yeah, maybe a bit less of this side, look. So, the width is 35, call that three over there, 38, and two here, 40. So, call the, from top to bottom, 40 inches, which is 102 centimetres. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, as you can see, a bit closer, we've got the classic commands and colours. We've got left, centre, right, or right, centre, and left, depending on which side of the table you're at. Um, lovely patterns on it. Let me get a bit closer to really so you can see this a lot better. I'm looking through my little tally of you fans, so I can, it's always difficult to judge what you can see. But it's lovely, it really is. It looks like a star field, you know, with all the twinkling away in the distance, etc. So we've got all that. Now, yes, there's some creases in this, and that's fair. I've only just I've only just got it out of its box about an hour ago, so there are some creases. 
Now, but that doesn't bother me. I mean, if you had a game board, you've got creases anyway, aren't you, where it falls, and sometimes the, the two sides don't meet properly, and there's one slightly, there's a tire slightly. So that, that can bother me. And, and being a miniature gamer, I'm used to using battle mats, so this doesn't bother me. But one thing that is, if you're going to iron this, and I know some of you will, because you're all CD, let me just go to this corner. Now, it is very thin, this material. I'm not sure what this is on top. It's some kind of printing, but I don't know what it is. It feels very silky, very slick. Now, if I turn the mat over, you can see you've got this white like linen, very thin linen material. Now, I can only assume that the other side is the same as this, but this, I don't know if it's, I don't know how they've done it, if it's some sort of, well, I don't know how they've done it, if it's some sort of screen printing or what, I don't know. But if you're going to iron this, if you're OCD, let, a, let an old sailor give you a tip. Somebody who didn't have mummy or wifey to iron his uniform for parades. If you're going to iron it, make sure you turn this white side up. Put it on your ironing board, don't do it on the table because you need a soft underneath to get rid of creases, it's not a solid wood. Put it white side up on the ironing board, get yourself a pillowcase. Put the pillowcase on top and using a medium heat, not hot, you don't need steam, you're not, you're not pressing your bloody denim jeans, all you're doing is trying to get a crease out of a thin piece of material. Medium heat, going through two layers of linen with your pillowcase, onto the white side. A couple of passes of that and it'll be, it'll be as flat and dandy, neat and tidy as you wish. Um, now you can take that advice or not, um, but if you end up with a scorched and melted mat stuck to the bottom of your wife's iron, don't say I didn't tell you. Um, you can choose to take notice of that or not. It's up to you, but that would be my advice. Personally, it doesn't bother me. It can stay as it is. Right, let's get on to the next bit. Let's go to the terrain tiles, because when we set in commands and colours, we always have terrain tiles, don't we? And we've got woods and mountains and rivers and, you know, the like. Well, obviously, we're not going to get that in, in here. But what they do is, and these hexes, I didn't say this, but these hexes are four inches or 10 centimetres across, so it's big, and so are the hexes. Now, they've done, on the reverse side of all the hexes, are these asteroid fields, which in some sense, you just put them down, you know, to cause a bit like forests, the block line of sight, and I think you can enter, but you have to stop. I don't know if you take damage, I don't think you do. And then the next turn, you can move again. So a bit like, it acts a bit like a forest. But the clever thing is, on the other side like this, and I don't know if you can see it, but some of them have like little letters in them, like F. Now, if I put that down there, F, and then this one, I think this is E. Now, if I put E here, like that, do you see how there's like a, it's a star system here, and we're getting like a, a planet form in there. We've got a J, K, and an L. Another K here. And another L. That obviously goes with that one. If I put that there, that one goes with that one. And do you see, we're, we're starting to... That J goes with there. And, we're, and this K goes here. So, all the hexes we are creating a planet there, a huge planet with whatever surrounding it this is going to be something else there's an e and f there'll be there's another part of that planet there so the terrain and look how it stands out that the colors stand out on the black background that is absolutely bloody awesome and, and there's, there's quite a few more not as many as you get in commander colors but there's more planets there look H to H, this, this is going to go together to form a, an Earth-like planet, really. 
and so on. Some are just a single planet. All of them, of course, have the, the you know, the, the field on the back. So you can put them out. That one there, part of a planet with a, a moon. So fantastic. Love these. And I love the way you can join things together like this to create bigger um, like planets. Remember, we was talking about the uh, transports. If you had a transport on each of that part of that planet, you'd be getting victory points for every time it was sat there. So that, let's put them up there. Now, other tokens you get are these round ones here. And um, they're the same ball size. And what this is basically, when a capital ship, a, a battleship, carrier, uh, admiral's flagship, is destroyed, it leaves behind the debris, which you put into the hex where it was destroyed. And it's basically a hazard. I don't think you can enter it. And it's going to block line of sight as well. So these huge ships, and let's face it, these, these battleships and trip notes are, you know, huge huge monstrous things if you know in our imagination and it's going to leave a going to leave a bit of scrap metal behind isn't it floating around so you've got tiles for that and there's there's about half a dozen of them for uh, damaged uh, capital ships next i'll show you the dice these are your custom dice now they're not there's no stickers with this game i'm pleased to say although to be honest i think I didn't have a problem with stickers, but uh, these feel a lot nicer. Now, we've got stars, we've got like an explosion marker, we've got green circle, a blue triangle, a purple square, oh, and uh, the other one, uh, red alert. Just like commands and colours dice, let's move you in a little bit so it seems a bit better. Just like commands and colours, each one means something different. Red alert works a little bit like a flag, um, depending on the ship you are. Know, some ships, like bigger ships, can ignore a number of red alerts, just like a, a unit with support or a unit with, a, with an officer in Napoleonics, etc. But it's basically does a similar job to a flag. To hit, instead of an infantry, artillery and a cavalry, you've got these. And uh, fighters are normally um, circles, because it's tiny. Your destroyers and cruisers are the triangle, and your capital ships are the purple square. Be this has got a problem here, it's not an explosion, it's called something else. But this is basically like a, a hit. Even so, if you if you're rolling, you're trying to hit a capital ship, and you're rolling three dice. Say, if you get a a purple square and one of them, that is a hit. The sum. Now that's a a novel thing, a new thing, that is introduced as he always does when he brings out the new the new type to the same system. These give you what are known as sum talk. Um, it's like a currency. Let me show you. One. Well, I've got me a little tub somewhere. I'll put them all there. Yeah, there they are. These, these, some, they're like a, a currency. And what you do with these, you, when I get to the cards, when you get some cards, you, you have to spend these to actually be able to play a card. You'll be able to play a normal command card, but then you, there's, there's some extra cards where you can only play them with these uh, sun tokens. So if you're rolling in battle, and if you roll a, uh, a star, a, a sun, you automatically get one of these to put with your, uh, you know, in your bank, if you like. So that's something new. Uh, so let, let me move the dice out for it. In fact, I'll go to the cards next. It might make a bit more sense then, because I, I, I don't think I'm explaining this very well at all. Now, Packs of cards, it's three. We've got task force cards. There's 12 of these. And basically, what it is, is shuffle them up 
and then you each get one and whatever it says on that card let's pull this one put, put that away I'll put that on there so you can see it without me shaking it for this scenario you're going to have a, a flagship what times one three cruisers three destroyers a heavy fighter unit and a standard fighter unit which comes to 99 points and most scenarios give you an extra 40 points to play with to customize your, your fleet to add some more support vessels so you can customize your fleet now you can see that we've got points values here so you've got an army building list something we've never had before as far as i'm aware in commands and colors so you don't even have to use these if you don't want if you and your buddy assuming you've got enough models say well well let's go for a 150 point fleet each and you can build what you want you don't have to say no notice that maybe you'd have to have a flagship but everything else pick what you want um, 150 point fleet, 200 point fleet, and, and away you go. So that's that's the task force cards. Now, you remember the sun tokens? We've got these com, com, red alert combat cards. Let me put them down because I'm shaking again. Now, let's get in. Picking view, you know, I'm useless, aren't I? Now DC, to play this card, like, trouble with parasites, play this card alongside your command card. Opponent must lose all but two star tokens, but to play it, it's going to cost you three star tokens. Okay, let's have a look at another one, let's take a couple off. This one's going to cost you one star token. Lock on target cruiser. Play this card when an ordered unit is rolling its combat dice against a cruiser unit combat with one additional dice oh you can't see that can you but do you see the similarity with the the cards in in like napoleon well it would do one it's the same picking system lock on target on a battleship similar to the cruiser one fears and broadside you know you've got the, you, you see this game okay already i've played it i can fears and broadside i'm going pew 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 you, you, you're going to be doing it aren't you Come on, be, be, I'll be honest. You just, you just looked at a lot of toys and you can't tell me you aren't going to be going pew 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 when their old face of broadside goes. So you play this card, blah blah blah. Same utility. And again, you've got to pay two star tokens to play that. And then finally, the last pack of cards is the good old command cards. And we know what these are. We, uh, the, 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 these are the cards we're all used to. You know, move centre, centre sector. We don't. Well, it's not left flank, right flank. No, no, no. It's space, isn't it? So it's sector. Um, on the left, three in the left. Issue one order three is on the left wing. Oh, the colour left wing. Then we're not left, left sector. Oh, let make you. Oh, centre sector. Come on, make your mind up, Richard. What's it going to be? Is it going to be wing, centre, or what? Flank, right wing. And so you got then, and then you, of course you get some of your uh, your fancy dandy ones. Uh, warp charge up to three units in one or more sectors are ordered to warp charge in other words it's it's uh, force march in it that's the same thing it just worded differently cleverly done to give it the theme counter attack well i suppose this is when you play this card it becomes a copy of the command yeah counter attack it's the same as in napoleonic you, you, you play that and you do exactly the same what your opponents done well, it would be same game system, but cleverly done to make it themed into space. Light speed, up to four units in what in one or more sectors are ordered to travel at light speed. Units may move up to five hexes, even through friendly units. Well, that's like force match again, isn't it? Where you can move units from the baseline, you can get them moving forward. Better to do this with light speed. So again, much of a muchness. If you know how to play one of the commands and colours games. You're going to start, you're going to step into this game in 10 minutes, aren't you? You're not going to have to learn much. What else I'm going to show you? Oh, yes. Come to the rumble class. You get these. You get two of them. I'll put these down and I'll come out because I want you to see these. Because these are, you remember the sheets you get? 
with all the stats. Um, the purchase points, remember, we can only build with this. What each unit is, uh, its ship name, um, sublight movement, how far it can move, it shows you in squares, it tells you. Its range in hexes, you know, what it can do, how many dice it rolls, for, for whatever distance away it is. Uh, unit hit hits on, so it tells you what it's hitting on, what colour you need, and these star bears, they, these pulse bears, or whatever the hell they call, I can't remember. And then it's 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 defences. If it's there's any, it can ignore this or it can ignore or blast. They call blast them explosion things. The blast. They can ignore this. They can ignore that. Uh, notes. You get notes to show various things. Um, red alert. Uh, your capital ships can ignore one red alert, and so on. Now the clever thing with this is, that's all the ships in the base game. But you turn it over. And that's all the ships in the expansions. We've got the Vice Admiral's flagship, which I showed you. Well, I didn't, because it was the same school. But the carrier, the Dreadnought, the logistics transport. And it gives you all their stats on the same card. We don't need two of these huge cards. Just need the one, two sides. The, the, the foresight, well, and, and a bit of business acumen, actually, to put this on the other side. Because you think, oh, Dreadnought, look at that. Got to have one of them babies. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, you know, it's cleverly done. They're always great at the player raids in uh, the commands and colour system. Good quality cards, as is all of this. The cards are good. I shall sleeve them because they'll get a lot of use with the, the uh, combat cards and the command cards. Really good quality stuff. Love it. Um, I showed you the star tokens. There's a there's all the tokens here. Oh yeah, these are just, if you capture something, if it's the green forces, you put one of them on. There's another, there's another tub. Well, you don't get these little tubs there. Ah, 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 producer. These, these are red alert tokens. You know, we're moving the red, red alert things. Um, because these can cause grief to your ships if you're stuck with something like that. But again, I'm not going through the rules in this. This is just the components over here. There's the command, you know, this is for the red faction, you know, we we know we own this area, this is on our, our bit to show that they that they're in command of it. So we'll put that there. Now what else have we got? Oh please. One of the cars or some of the cars makes you use a cloaking device. Great, eh? So your ship goes invisible. There's only three of them, so it's obviously made me only three cards, but so it's not something that's going to care regularly, but it, it could happen. So there's a cloaking device. And then here, which is different than other games, is you actually have these cards. Here's, there's one for the reds and one for the greens. Let's look at the greens. Now, for instance, let's not try and do this. That would stand behind your squadron of fighters. So you've got three model fighters in a hex. This would go with it. You can see it can move four hexes. It's a fighter. It's hit on a green circle. It's part of the green force. Uh, if it's only one space away, it gets to roll three dice. If it's one, one uh, two spaces away, it can only roll one dice, and that's the limit of its range. So let's put that down. Let's put this on. Heavy cruiser. He can only move two hexes. We know he's green because he's got green here. The triangle shows us is a, is a, is a heavy cruiser. Is a you know is a he's not a battleship, but he's a, a strike a strike ship. The close range there is going to roll three uh, three dice. Then three, three X's away, two, and then one. And on the back, a numbers. For instance, this heavy cruiser is four, for instance, and that fighter was just one. When you destroy, say, the three fighters in that unit, like you would take flags in Napoleonics, you get that. That goes on your little card. That's one victory point. And everything you destroy, See, there's the threes and 
all sorts on there. There's look, there's a seven there. What? What's that seven? That's your that's your heavy battleship. There's it. So you can see you can only you can only hit it on a purple squared on a row. You only got a moment or two. Look at its hitting power: three, 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 and one. Destroy that squadron. Seven victory points. Okay. So and these just sit on the hex behind the units and you, when you move your units you just take that way so everybody can see straight away what you're looking at because some of their models do look very similar uh, but now you go oh, oh it's a cruiser it's not i thought it was a destroyer but it's a cruiser okay and away you go so that's them uh not much else i have to show you now these are the faction boards very similar uh, single-sided um and all you do with these is basically is when you get your victory points you put them on there um simple as that probably keep your cards on there if you wanted to although i'll probably keep them next but wherever but yeah you keep your victory points in there there's one for each player uh, not really needed but a nice little touch and then finally i think i covered everything is the rule book now again it, it it's beautiful. The artwork is just stunning. I love it. Let me. It's beautiful. Pew pew pew. Oh, sorry, sorry. We've got what? 43, 44 pages with front and back cover. Now, we've got an introduction as always. Um, it's beautifully coloured, nice thick, good quality paper. It tells us all our components, which we know what everything is, what it all does, the cards, everything. Idiot's guide, there's the stands, the bases, you know, away you go. Read this, and to be honest, for a, a, a regular Commands and Colours player, you can, you know, you can skim this in your way. Capital ships, a heavy battleship squadron, you've got four models. Like a standard battleship, just three. Simple as that. You would have three models in a hex or four models in a hex. That's the difference between cap, a heavy and a, a standard. Just an extra model or an extra block, if you like, and it goes. Same with fighters. You get four in for a heavy, long-range fighter squadron, three in a standard. There's our tyres, what we was talking about. Wow, I absolutely love these. I think these are fantastic. Um, Unit markers, we've discussed that, look, it goes right up to eight there. Command cards, we've looked at them. And all your little tokens explains it all better than what I did. But there you go, it's all there, in its usual inimitable form. Your, your cards, which we've showed, and the victory, the victory stands here, you put your pieces into it. Objects of the game, we'll go through that, how to play, uh, face for combat. All the usual, how to move, line of sight, the usual things, what you would expect in commands and colours. And to be honest, I don't think, I've had a quick skim through it. I won't pretend I've read the rule again. I've skimmed through it. And it's it's the standard fare. You know what you're doing. Just set in space. That's any difference. You could you could supplement this. You could replace this with a Napoleonic book. Just scrub out the Napoleonic references and put in space. And you, you cracked it. It's just virtually the same thing. They do change it up a bit, obviously, the points. Um, no flags now, you're looking at victory points. And I do like them where you can build and customise your own fleets, because you've now got a, an army building, you've got numbers to actually create your own fleets, which I think is fantastic. Um, space features, the asteroid field, that was a word I couldn't think of before. Capital ship, uh, destroyed debris field. Uh, these are uh, these are the just move on the, these are the little pamphlets that come in the expansion packs. This is the one that come with the dreadnought unit, so it's showing you the dreadnought and it's giving you its bits and pieces, um, telling you a little bit about it. Can you see? Let's move it across a minute. And we get c scenario number nine dreadnoughts, and it shows you how to lay them out to fight a battle with Dreadnought. A little bit of a spleb, as you always get. And then on the back, scenario number 10. There's actually eight, eight scenarios in, in the playbook, in the rule book. 
and this is number nine and ten so this is obviously the first expansion that you really should be played and again the carrier that's that's got number what's that 12 yeah 11 and 12 so it's a dreadnought then the carrier then the vice admiral's flagship which is goes up to scenario 14 and finally the logistics and space platform and that one takes the scenarios up to 18 so there must be four in here yeah okay and look we've got these naming stars and things great so i put them there i keep them in there with them because well it's just the scenarios out there it's nice to keep these handy not banging around in the boxes now we'll come to the scenarios which is great but before we come to them I want to show you this. I want you to be able to read this. I want to get this around it so you can. Right. I'm saying I'm looking through my small viewfinder. So. Stace history. Now you read that. And what springs to mind when I read that? Well, I'll let you read it. In fact, stop your camera and read it. Stop your play and read it. And then I'll carry on talking. Now, games like Twilight Imperium, which are board games with spaceships, you get a whole host of background history and fluff. Games Workshop, they made a bloody career out of it. They've created volumes of stuff, of histories and fluff about worlds that never begin existed, but the, the, the minute, what we got here? Three paragraphs. And it's not even original. After a joint effort by all known systems, yeah, what system? And races in the galaxy, yeah, what races? To defeat the Kroll invasion. Who are they? Where, where are they from? But they've gone then. The tension between the outlying planets and the Commonwealth Alliance again began to man. Oh dear. How original. Coming to a head during the High Council meeting when they all basically walked out, although the Commonwealth didn't like it, of a rival galactic organisation, an unwritten truce came in. And where he found his black the rebel the rebel confederation. Rebel. That's original, isn't it? We've got a Commonwealth and we've got a rebel. Why don't you just, Richard, put the Space Imperium instead of the Commonwealth and the Rebel Alliance. I don't know who wrote this, a nine year old maybe? Who was just finished his Star Wars comic? But, you know, is that it? Really? Is that it? Is that the best you could come up with? I mean, that is pathetic. That is the only. It doesn't spoil the gameplay doesn't spoil the fantastic components. This is absolutely top-notch top stuff. Everything. And then, you get a nine-year-old to write that. I want more than that. I'd have to create my own history and backstory and... Well, <laughs> that's a joke. Absolute joke. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Rich. That's the only thing that spoils it. I didn't expect a huge book, but you know, a couple of pages, you know, a 1500, 2000 word article would have been nice, you know. All right, it, it's not going to affect most people, they're not going to be bothered. But, you know, I find that very poor. You know, you, 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 want, you want more than that. That's pathetic. But then you've got your scenarios, you know, and away you go. And the good thing with this is, like, there, you've got to put set ships in places. But once you get to scenario, what's this? Uh, this scenario, Cardinal's Belt 1, they just put these disc, these markers down and you can put what ships you want in each place. So again, not only are you designing your own fleet, you can you can lay them out like you want. You don't have to follow like, the rules for the Battle of Waterloo or Austerlitz. Or you can put them where you want. Great again. Fantastic. And and so it goes on. You've got your... You've got your... All your... Scenarios, number seven, and finally number eight. 
helpful reminders, credits, etc., etc. Finish it and break. We know we've got the rest of the uh, scenarios so far published in our little handy dandy books that came with the expansions. And that, my friends, is Commands and Colours Red Alert, the latest game in the C and C um, range. And it's fantastic. I can't say anything else. I've not even played it yet, but just the models crying out to be painted. Um, the whole, everything, the components, it's top, top quality. Well done, Plastic Soldier Company and Richard Borg. But that history, oh, I'm so sorry. You, you Just one, the, and probably the easiest thing you could have got right, and you blew it. But maybe that's just me being too pedantic. I like a backstory, I like a reason why they're fighting. And if you're not going to give me one, I'll, I'll, I'll make me bloody own up. So anyway, that's it, folks. Uh, so I'll be pew, 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 pew. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye now.